So I have a, a bachelor's degree in geology and physics, and then a PhD in, in geoscience. And then I did an NSF uh, postdoctoral fellowship in science, technology, engineering, and math education. It was a program that existed for three years, and it was to train people from traditional domains in how to do, say, science education research. And then over the years, I've become more engrossed in uh, the cognitive sciences as well. So geocognition is the study of how people perceive and understand the Earth. Uh, it encompasses um, everything from cognitive processes, how the brain works in terms of working memory and long-term storage and retrieval of that information, into these other things that you've heard us talking about today, social cultural issues that relate to how the brain functions, um, affect, emotion, for instance, how that affects things. In this lab, we particularly study experts and novices, so I like to compare uh, people who have no experience in the geological sciences and how they relate to geological information all the way through people who are the uber experts and how they relate to that same information. Um, and when you do that, you can learn some really fascinating things that aren't obvious um, by just studying, say, novices. Unbeknownst to most people, it's actually incredibly important in our lives. So we are all familiar with things like climate change. That's something that's in the news. But very few people um, that I find when I'm, say, teaching a class recognize that, say, the metal in their cars ultimately comes from something a geologist has done. Right? A geologist has to figure out where that metal is, and it comes from the earth. Okay? And geographers had to help with that. And there's these studies of the earth and how it works and how um, material um, from the earth can be used in the human endeavor. People aren't really aware of that. One of the things that um, we try to do is we try to portray information to the general public to make them aware of pressing issues. And the thing about geocognition is it allows us to come up with effective ways of conveying information um, so that people will actually understand. I think that MSU is the leading institution for thinking about these multidisciplinary research endeavors. And so it isn't hard for me to build connections and research collaborations with people that at other institutions I really wouldn't talk to. So I have a collaboration with a linguist and some sociologists, or I'm building a collaboration with uh, journalists at the Knight Center, um, with a guy at the 4-H Garden, the head of the 4-H Garden. I've uh, been talking to people at the museum. These are collaborations that are possible because of the way MSU has positioned itself, I think. Um, and it's unique. It's very unique among institutions. One of the most exciting projects we've been working on is some eye tracking research. And so um, we, we had an opportunity to rent an eye tracker for just a, a little bit of time, for about a week. And um, Scott Clark, who's a research associate in the lab, and I, and a colleague at NASA, put together an experiment um, where we had subjects come in and look at three different temperature maps. One was the typical rainbow map that I think you're, you're probably familiar with, that rainbow palette that people use. One was the exact same data set, but it was a pink to purple palette, and another one was a grayscale palette. And we really wanted to see how people engaged with those exact same data sets, but utilizing different color palettes. Did the way in which we presented the information change the way that people perceived the information and thought about the information and interpreted the information? And um, I think they did, in fact, perceive it differently. So one of the findings, for instance, is that um, with the rainbow palette, people don't look at the scale as much as they do with the other palettes because they're assuming something. Um, there's also chunks of that map for the rainbow scale that they don't look at at all. They just don't look at the green part at all, which you're losing information when you don't. So um, if you want to convey information, first people have to be looking at the places that are important. And then you, if they don't look there, then you'll never, uh, there won't be any learning, right? You have to have people looking there. So that was really exciting. Um, that was coupled with a project that Scott Clark has done where he's looking at some of the, um, most widely used images in the geosciences. And what he's done is he's interviewed novices, he's interviewed experts, he's collected questionnaires, he did this eye tracking study on that image as well. And he's able to show aspects of the image that are confusing. Experts understand it, students don't. And so we're able to take that, those findings and make a better image for different populations. We have a big grant from NSF to study how geologists do what they do. And we're basically taking a bunch of geologists out to Montana and they're everywhere from 
undergraduate majors who've had a little bit of experience mapping, all the way through people who map for a living. And we're putting GPS units on them and tracking what they do, and they're making maps, and some of them are doing audio logs. We interview them, they do a whole suite of cognitive tasks. We're trying to determine what are the, the variables that seem to correlate with mapping skill. And how could we then use that information to train students? There's a lot of discourse in the geoscience ed community about the best way to teach. And field work is a good thing, field training is a good thing, going outside is a good thing. But there really isn't very much research that says what is it about the field that is positive or negative for learning. So um, that, that study is really exciting. We're finding some, some results that are contrary to popular belief, which I find fascinating.